I needed a new larger station building for my layout and thought that the Pico Manyways station LK12 together with their matching station house LK14 would fit the bill admirably. To see how these would look and to check if they would fit I made some simple cardboard mock-ups. I decided early on in the order in which to place the buildings on the layout i.e. left to right, toilet, station building and station master's house. Space limitations on the layout meant that the Pico station building in the kit would be too long and would need shortening. Hopefully this will not be a problem. Now I couldn't decide whether to paste the station building flush with the station master's house or slightly behind it. If the station building was inset a little I could use the Pico canopy that came with the LK12 kit whereas if the buildings were flush with one another I could perhaps include a longer awning covering both buildings. This however would not use the canopy from the Pico kit as it would not be long enough. A wheels canopy perhaps? Whilst I was mulling over this problem I decided I might as well make a start on the actual construction. I began with the station master's house as that could be built more or less as Pico intended without any major alterations. At first glance the kit contains a lot of parts but it does produce two houses we only need enough for one as laid out here. My station will be on a British Railways southern region layout and the doors, windows, gutterings and downpipes are all helpfully moulded in green. But I don't like the shiny plastic finish so I will paint them anyway. Also the window frames need to be white not green. Similarly I will repaint the roof sections in a matte slate grey colour. The house can be built in various ways. I think that the wall facing the platform would look better without a door in it and the side which will be joined to the station building will also be better without a door in it. The lower windows should be hidden by the end of the station building when it's joined to it. The walls come in a pre-coloured brick colour which as well as being a little shiny is also too bright for my taste so these will have to be painted as well. The opportunity will also be taken to add mortar courses between the bricks. The roofs, ridge tiles and chimneys have now been primed with Halford's Rattle Can Grey Primer. The doors, barge boards, gutters and downpipes have also been primed in grey. The windows have been primed using Halford's Rattle Can White Primer. It has gone on so well that I probably won't bother to cover it with a top coat. I'm not a fan of brilliant white window frames as on a model they look too bright to my eyes. I use Halford's Primer for all my model buildings as it is easy to use, goes on smoothly and takes humble enamel top coats very well. In order for the station house to butt up closely with the station building it is necessary to remove part of the plinths from the base of the wall where the two buildings will join. So it was now time to decide where the two buildings will be joined. A quick measure of the side of the house and the decision was made for me. In order to completely cover the two windows in the station house the front of the station building will have to be inset from the front of the station house. An appropriate length of the plinth was therefore filed smooth to remove it. The lintels over the windows were similarly filed smooth. Holes were drilled in the two walls of the house for later fixing of the gutters. I decided that the window frames looked OK in their prime state so thought I would now apply the glazing. It was cut from a sheet provided in the kit. 
I used Deluxe Materials Glue and Glaze applied with a cocktail stick as it dries nice and clear and doesn't leave any obvious marks if you use too much. I didn't glaze the doors at this stage as they need painting with their green top coat first. The gutters, barge boards and doors have now been painted Southern Region Green. I have taken the opportunity to dirty them slightly as the green colour straight out of the tin looks a little bright to my eyes. Glazing has been added to the doors. The roofs, ridge tiles and the chimney have now had their top coats. The window sills were painted a concretey cream colour and affixed to the walls which were then given their first coat of a brick colour. The lintels were also given a first coat of the same colour as the sills. Both the walls and lintels were given a second coat of their respective colours and once these were dry the mortar courses were added. Full details of my painting techniques can be found in my previous video on brick retaining arches. Next the windows and doors are glued to the walls a little light filing of the window surrounds was necessary to enable them to fit snugly in position but it was worth it as the windows are lovely mouldings and when painted white as here they look really good once in place on the walls. The basic house has now been assembled and I'm very pleased with the results so far. Next, I will add the detailing parts. In the meantime, I decided not to add the detailing at this stage, but instead decided to concentrate on building the station building itself first. To fit the site I had available I needed to shorten each side of the station building by about 10 millimeters and because of the window and door configuration I had to make the cuts on the right hand ends of both the sides. This may well have unintended consequences later when I come to fit the interior partitions but unfortunately it couldn't be avoided. The ends where the cuts have been made have been filed or is that chamfered at an angle of about 45 degrees so they can butt up nicely with the end pieces when the building is assembled. The roof pieces have similarly been shortened to fit the revised station building. They have been reduced by the same length as the building was shortened plus an amount to allow for the overhang which is no longer required. Recesses have been filed on the underside of the roof pieces where they will be joined to the wall. I reduced the length of the canopy roof by removing equal size pieces off each end. This was enable me to use the three locating pegs when attaching the canopy to the station building. There were three corresponding holes in the wall of the latter. However, when I shortened the front wall of the station building I reduced it all at one end so unfortunately when I tried to line up the pegs with the holes there was an overhang at one end so three more holes were drilled in the station wall to enable the canopy to utilize the original pegs and be centered on the building so there are now six holes. 
I am hoping that the old, now spare holes will not be noticeable under the canopy once it's assembled, but I really should have thought of this earlier. Plan ahead, eh? The next stages of assembly are very much as Pico's instruction sheet and much the same as those for the station house, so I won't repeat them. The various parts have been painted and the basic body of the building has now been assembled. I have put in some false plasticard floors on both buildings to make them more rigid. I intend gluing them together to make a nice solid finished model and these walls need to be flush with one another. In addition, the false floors will enable me to easily glue the finished model to the platform surface. A few days later and the model is finished. I think the two kits have gone together well and make quite an imposing station. The canopy supports will be straightened slightly when it is ultimately glued in position on the layout. I did glue the card interior partitions into the station building as suggested by Pico, but I'm not sure I should have bothered as they can't be seen at normal viewing distances. Anyway, I know they're there. I welded the toilet block door in place before I realised that perhaps I should have left the entrance open. So for now, the toilet is closed. Gentlemen will just have to cross their legs and hope there's a toilet on the train. The rear of the building looks just as good as the front and the posters as supplied in the kit finish the model off nicely. The most difficult part of the assembly for me was fitting the gutters and particularly the downpipes. I find these things very fiddly, but they do make a big difference to the finished model. Care must now of course be taken when I handle the model, so the sooner it's glued into position on the layout the better. All in all, I think Pico are to be congratulated on these two kits. They go together well and the finished models look very good when painted carefully. The diagrammatic instructions included are extremely helpful and easy to follow. The kits can be easily altered to fit any location and I would thoroughly recommend them. And finally, the completed station is posed temporarily on the layout and I must say I'm rather pleased with it. More details may be added later but that's it for now. See you next time.